Tokyo 2020, you're finally here. After being suspended a year and talks of cancellation altogether, it's almost a surprise we have an Olympics at all. Let's have a look at the latest Olympic news, how to watch the action, the forecast and the ones to watch. Now, I know Olympic sailing may not be as fun to spectate as SailGP or the America's Cup, but there's plenty to enjoy about it. Not least, its cast of athletes includes many SailGP and America's Cup sailors. Slingsby, Ainsley and Besson all came through the Olympic pathway. Though they aren't competing in Tokyo, there are plenty of other top names to watch. Here's a quick rundown. We have America's Cup tactician Giles Scott competing again in the Finn class after winning gold in Rio. Having long been in Ainsley's shadow, he could well have been to more Olympics, but he'll be hoping to double his medal count in Tokyo. We've been used to Scott dominating the Finn class, but in recent years it's got a bit tighter. However, Giles Scott still has a great chance of doubling his medal haul in Tokyo. Next up, we have none other than sailing royalty, Pete Burling and Blair Chuk. New Zealand's double America's Cup winners are competing in their third Olympics, having won silver in 2012 being pipped by Australia's Nathan Eldridge, winning in Rio and favourites going into this Olympics. Although they'll have stiff competition from Britain's Dylan Fletcher, who if you remember helmed the British Shell GP challenge in season one before being usurped by Sir Ben Ainsley himself. Sailing for Spain in the NACRA class, we have Sail GP sailor and three times world champion Florian Trattel. His Sail GP teammate Jordi Zama will also be competing in the 470 class. Lastly, we have arguably Giles Scott's closest competition in the form of New Zealand's Josh Jr. He recently won gold at the Finn Gold Cup and will be hoping to beat Scott to the crown in what will be the Finn's last Olympics. So if you've never really been into watching Olympic sailing before, but you like Sail GP and you like the America's Cup, then I urge you to give Olympic sailing a watch. At the very least, it's interesting to track how your favourite sailors are doing in the results. Now, side point here, but it's interesting how many of sailing's top talent come through dinghies. It's oft said that it's easier for a dinghy sailor to learn yachts than a yachty to learn dinghies. And this link is strengthening as the yachts of the America's Cup are now just big cats that foil. And indeed, the Olympic classes are moving in that direction with the introduction of the foiling NACRA class. So talking of dinghies, I'd just like to draw your attention to my free website, dinghyracingtips.com. It's got loads of useful information which will help you improve your dinghy sailing or even your yacht sailing if you're not a dinghy sailor. Recently, I've been getting articles from some top sailors, including 12 times world champion Nick Craig, Rio Olympic gold medalist Saskia Clark, and America's Cup sailor, Sail GP helm, and laser gold medalist, Paul Goodison. You can also subscribe to the newsletter, so when new posts come out, that's your once a week or so, then you get an email with the latest sailing tips. If you're interested, I'll leave a link below to it, so you can give it a browse after this video. Right, back to Olympic sailing. Let's turn now to how to watch the action. The Olympics itself will run until the 8th of August, but the sailing itself is in a shorter time window, the race schedule is staggered for the 10 sailing events from the 25th of July to the 4th of August. Annoyingly for us Brits, only some of the sailing will be shown by the BBC. In previous Olympics, it was all available on the red button. So the only guaranteed way to watch all the action, whether you are Brit or from elsewhere in the world, is to go to the official providers Eurosport and Disney+. Plus. I believe they are both subscription services, but it shouldn't break the bank to sign up for a month. If you want more detail on how to watch the action, then I recommend checking out this page, which I'll link below. It's titled, How to Follow the Action. We've got the 10 Olympic classes that will be competing here. Interestingly, there's 350 athletes from 65 nations in 250 boats. World Sailing will be running a dedicated website for the Olympic Games, where you can check out the latest news and the results. But to make it easy, I'll include a link to the results below this video, as well as the daily schedule. Before we have a look at the location of the event and the forecast, if you've been enjoying this video, I'd appreciate it if you give it a thumbs up. It does really help the channel and just gives me an idea of what videos you like and which you don't. So, on to the forecast now. So, as is tradition in the Olympic Games, 
The sailing event in Tokyo won't actually be taking place in Tokyo. Instead, it will be taking place in Enoshima, which is an island in Japan, located just over an hour south of Tokyo. So, here's the forecast for Enoshima. Sailing starts on the 25th, which is looking like quite a light wind day, slightly building on the Monday, but looks to be pretty light for the next week or so. However, being a coastal venue, those light winds could allow a sea breeze to develop, so we could be seeing some stronger winds in the afternoon. Wind direction is a bit all over the place, so we can't determine too much from that. Temperature-wise, it is pretty hot, although not up to the 40 degrees some of the athletes were expecting. I was watching this video the other day where Tom Squires, who I used to be on the British team with coincidentally, was unpacking the British Olympic kit. And to my surprise, it was all white. And I've since seen the pictures of the British Olympic team training in Anoshima with all white kit. For the last 10 years or so, they've all been sailing in a kit that was predominantly light blue. So the reason for this kit change apparently wasn't fashion, but was down to the practicality of sailing in these high temperature conditions, as white reflects the heat. Any sailors sailing in black? New Zealand maybe? Maybe in for a bit of a roast. Right, before we end the video, some quick Olympic news. As many of you may have heard, there will be no spectators in Tokyo. Not that that would have affected the sailing too much. And lastly, good news for you Aussies out there, as Brisbane has recently been named as the host city for the 2032 Olympics and Paralympics. I say good news, but perhaps it's not. Certainly the locals in Tokyo and Rio weren't particularly happy with the Games going ahead. If you're an Aussie, let me know what you think about hosting the Games for the second time in 32 years. Interestingly, I believe it was the 2000 Olympics in Sydney, which was one of the only Olympics to actually make money as a result. Perhaps this is what's given the Aussies the motivation to do it all over again. So I'm going to leave the video there. Note, if you want to watch the Olympic coverage live, that Japan is eight hours ahead of the UK. If you're in another country, you can check the time in Tokyo by just Googling time in Tokyo. Stay tuned for another video in the next few days on the ones to watch in Tokyo. If you don't want to miss that, press the subscribe button and all notifications and YouTube will let you know as soon as that's released. So with that said, enjoy the Olympics and I'll see you soon.